All right, there are usually only two reasons we lose points. Our inability to hit a target and or we weren't standing in the right spot. All right, you guys, welcome to Tournament Talk. This is your host, Marissa Johnson, and today I'm very excited to have a very special guest, Ryan from Two Minute Tennis. Woo! <laughs> Thanks, Marissa, so much. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> I, I was just saying in my last podcast how I needed to get one of those soundboards. Um, anyways, so um, love the quote that you started talking about. So obviously today's topic, everybody, we're talking about how to win more points. So this is super duper exciting. And before we get all into the nitty gritty, I wanted to just obviously get to know Ryan a little bit more. So Ryan, the world wants to know um, all about you, how you got started with Two Minute Tennis and a little bit about your tennis history. Sure. So I, I'm 41 and I started playing tennis when I was five In I uh, grew up in central Pennsylvania. And uh, around the time I was 12, I really just fell in love with coaching, whether it was helping somebody in my, my junior class. And I just loved the mechanics of tennis and I loved communicating how to accomplish those mechanics. Uh, when I was 14, I started my first tennis teaching business. Um, I had basically a full slate of students every Saturday, um, and I, you know, teaching adults, teaching kids. And when I was 18 years old, four days after graduating high school, I did not go to college. Uh, it probably would have been a total waste for me anyway, because I was going to be a tennis coach no matter what. <laughs> four, four days after t uh, uh, graduating high school. I moved to about an hour north of Philadelphia, and I've been teaching at that club, Doylestown Tennis Club, ever since. It's now, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry, my fault. So about uh, 2014, I got the idea that I wanted to do some online instruction. And so I had noticed that a lot of coaches were putting up very long uh, videos, 50 minute videos, 45 minute videos. And I started hearing people because it started to really become popular. Mm -hmm. I started hearing people at my tennis club talking about how they wish the videos were shorter. Right. And I got the idea, why not come up with a shorter version of tennis instruction on video, online? Mm -hmm. And that's where I like the alliteration of two-minute tennis. I like the sound. Um, it just kind of lets you know that it's short bits of information. And that kind of took me kind of to this podcast right here. Mm -hmm. I started doing a little more on social media, on Instagram, now on TikTok and YouTube, uh, my own podcast. So it's been really fun. I've been able to meet great people like you and just so many other people who are passionate about tennis. And that's kind of how I got into this podcast with you right now. Awesome. I love it. I honestly, um, I remember the first time I ran across your Instagram account and I was reading two minute tennis and I was like, Hmm, that sounds catchy, but Instagram only lets you upload one minute. So I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, A lot of people say that. And I'm like, no, 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 it has nothing to do with Instagram. It's just, it's just, yeah. it's just my name. It's on all Instagram. for the alliteration. <laughs> it's all for the alliteration. What, you know, a, a minute and 50 second tennis was already taken, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> awesome. So that's super awesome. So you're a uh, tennis fanatic. That's really cool about your, you know, after high school, you already knew you wanted to be a tennis coach. For me, it was totally different. I was in college, like wondering what am I going to do with my life? And I don't know why I didn't think about tennis coaching, but even after I got my degree in marketing, hello, tennis coach still. So, yeah. so I don't know. Um, I think they're both very useful, but anyways, um, so awesome to get to know you, but let's get into what the people came for, even though they probably came to get to know you too. Um, <laughs> we're going to learn about how to win more points. So you've got a couple bullet points. Uh, I know you gave me two topics that you would like to discuss about how you can really win points, and I 100% agree with them. So let's talk about the very first thing that you need to be able to win more tennis points. Yeah, so... The first thing you've got to do is you, and, and really the quote is, there are reasons why we lose tennis points, and they are <clears throat> our inability to hit targets. 
Yeah. And we weren't standing in the right spot on the court. So let's go with the first one. Yeah. In, the inability to hit a target. <clears throat> I've been teaching now for 23 years, you know, after high school. And I've come to realize a while back, many, many years back, that my students, and my students range from beginners to like a 4.5 level of play. That's my typical, that's like a typical tennis club and a typical tennis coach. Yeah. I came to realize that my students were not specific enough with their targets, mm -hmm. specifically their air target. I have been shocked every time I ask my students, hey, on that last shot, can you tell me exactly how high over the net you were trying to make the ball cross? Mm. They'll say no. And then I'll, I'll ask a group of people. And I like asking a group of people because then they don't feel like they're the only one because they right. get to hear other people say the same low number. Yeah. I'll say, hey, George, what percentage of the time do you pick a specific air target over the net? And he'll go, and like they always make a face. Like they're like, right. uh, I hadn't even thought of that. I don't think say, many people have thought of that. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, I'm thinking of it now like crap. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. Know so I thought of that. <laughs> what I always tell my students is that your air target plus the speed of your ball plus the spin you put on the ball equals where it lands. And so you're not going to be able to hit the ball one inch over the net, which, by the way, happens to be players' favorite shot to hit. You're yeah. not going to hit the ball low over the net and hit it deep consistently. Right. You've right. got to smoke that ball. You've got to crush it in order for that to occur. And that's just a recipe for being inconsistent and a recipe for losing lots of points. Yeah. So the first thing I want players to understand is you want to be as specific as possible when it comes to what you want to do with that ball, how fast you want it to travel, the spin you want to put on it, the height, left or right, deuce or add, the depth, um, the spin, if I hadn't mentioned that already. So the goal is to be as specific as you can what I've noticed is generally the one that players miss the most, meaning they don't think of it, is the air target. And the air target happens before the court target. So sure. for, for the listeners, if every time you hit the ball, that, and by the way, this doesn't mean you always hit your air target. <laughs> I'm, I'm a tennis coach because I rarely hit my tennis target. <laughs> if I'd be on TV if I always hit it. Yeah. But, it, but at least have the goal and when you have a goal, it's actually achievable. And that's like in anything, right? I don't have to go on that. But it's, it's about having as specific uh, an air target as possible because yeah. most people do think about where they want the ball to land a little bit, but the air target is the one that people miss the most. So just that tip right there, I mm -hmm. think will instantly get players to, especially if they're looking for more depth on their shots, Right. Think about lifting the ball and hitting the ball a little higher over the net than they typically would ever think they should. I, I love that. That is a completely new take. Like when you actually sent me the, the topic points, I was like, oh, yeah, hit a target. Like you want to hit it cross court or you want to hit it down the line, which I think most people revert to thinking about. But I love that you're bringing into the air target, which, of course, does come before the real target. Mm -hmm. And I, I just think intention is so important for a player to be able to work a point. So let's say, um, let's say I'm a newbie at tennis and I like, is what's the secret to being able to hit your air target? Then do you just, do you just think about it? Or like, I know it has a lot to do with technique and, and like, there's so much involved, but what do you have like a quickie? Maybe. Oh. It's absolutely one of my favorite drills. I'm really glad you're asking this question. So what I like to do is I like to go to the grocery store every so often on my mm -hmm. way to work and pick up a helium balloon. And Ooh. I get a helium balloon with a nice long string. And I'm meaning like a 30 foot string. Nice. And because you want to be able to practice lobs too. Nice. And I'm using helium balloons all the time. And you get the little chip clip at the bottom of the string. You clip the balloon and you can vary the height. Uh -huh. And just having that target floating mm -hmm. in the air above the net. I mean, uh, you, you'll be shocked how the students never hit the net because now they actually know, oh, that's where I want. And here's the amazing thing, Marissa, is you'll put the balloon much higher than the student thinks it should be. Yeah. And then they start missing. And I'm talking like six, eight, ten feet above the net mm -hmm. and get them rallying from five feet behind the baseline and they'll go there's yeah. no way mm -hmm. and i go go ahead let's rally 
and they'll miss the balloon by an inch. The ball lands a foot from the baseline, and I go, that's the height. Based on your level of play, you're a 3-0 level. Right. You don't have a lot of top spin right now. You're not hitting the ball very hard. Let's get the ball away from the net because the net accounts for more than 50% of all misses. So let's instantly stop hitting the net, which means we're going to be more consistent and we're going to raise our tolerance. So we're not going to, you know, we're going to force our opponent into missing more often. And we're going to get depth. It's like a double, triple whammy. But getting a helium balloon on a nice long string instantly gives you the visual. And then once you take it down and you start playing, you got that idea in your mind. That is so cool. And I think that's a perfect idea for my lesson. I should go pick up one of those. Um, so I think uh, that is on, honestly 100% true. Like, I think if more players just avoided the net altogether, I mean, just think just think even at the beginner or 3-0 level, like sometimes the perception of players on the court, they don't really know where they're standing. So if you make it over the net in general – they might just take it out of the air and, and like totally save you and not even realize it. 100%. So, you know, I think definitely that is the way to go. I think the net is death. And I think that if players can avoid that by using that drill, that's phenomenal. So amazing. Let's get moving to your second talking point, which I'm actually really excited about because I'm all about footwork. Hint, hint. What is it? Number two. <laughs> Now, hold on just a second. If we have time, I would like to talk about the second subcategory of this first one about, about um, the inability to hit targets. So let me just say this, if I may. Yeah, totally. Let's do it. It's really, it's really important because there are two reasons players don't hit their targets. Right. The first is that they don't have a target. But the second reason players don't hit their target is because there's something wrong with their technique. I am so passionate about filming. I am constantly trying to educate coaches, players, parents, club owners, the importance of self-evaluation yeah. through video. And so the, the best thing that we can all do, I did, a, a, I did an Instagram story. I've done multiple since last September, maybe five different times. And on my story on Instagram, I've asked, have you ever seen yourself on video? And Marissa, every time I ask that question, more than 50% of the time, the player says no. Or it's like 55 and then 45 right. in the answer. Yeah, so people don't think about it because, I mean, I think about it because I post for content and all that stuff. Yeah. And, you know, you know it's, it's tough also because I think some people think it's weird or like maybe they don't want to you know, offend the other person on the court. But to be right. honest, it's like, who cares? You're only going to film yep. yourself anyway. And, and, and as a coach, any, I never film someone without their permission. So I always ask, do you mind if I film you? And if they say no, and I get people who say no, I'm like, you got it. Um, but I would say 90% of the time they say yes. But every single one of my students has seen themselves on film and I encourage them to film themselves. Yeah. So that's a really big one. Because if you know what you look like, uh, people believe what they see, not what they hear. Exactly. And so when, so, so people, people tell me the type of swing they use and then I'm like, Oh, let me show you. And they're like, no way. I didn't even realize I was doing that. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, it, it, the, the, the biggest thing here is also that we have to understand that intentions drive technique. Mm -hmm. So how do you, it's like, that's why the waiter always asks you, how would you like your eggs? Yeah. The chef doesn't know what technique to use on the eggs until you have the intentions of what eggs you want. It's, and that's kind of the, I like scrambled. And so that's kind of the idea. It's, we need to make sure that one, we have a target. Mm -hmm. And then two, we have sound mechanics that can actually accomplish that target. So on to the second reason I believe people lose points. And it is because first they just have faulty footwork. They're not standing in the right spot. Yeah. And, the, and, the, and the first reason I believe truly is that they're not split stepping. Yeah. The split step is the braking mechanism. A lot of times people think of it as um, it's the way to get a first step and a fast first step, and it absolutely is. It's the yeah. best way to get a fast first step. But it's also a braking mechanism, especially when you want to change direction and when you're going forward. Exactly. We've, all gone, we've all gone too fast around a corner while driving. And if we had only gone a little slower, we could have taken a sharper turn. 
Well, when you're going forward to the net, I believe a lot of players don't like going to the net, not just because they have something wrong with their technique, but they always feel like the ball goes whizzing by them, or it seems like the ball's close to them, but they can't get to it. Yeah. And the ability to properly split step and the proper timing of a split step is to be in the air as your opponent makes contact yeah. so that you're landing just after, which synchronizes when your feet hit the ground to yeah. when your brain recognizes where to go. And the braking mechanism allows you to change direction, but then the bounce and the explosion allows you to be fast. It's a very cool thing. And so being in the right spot and being on balance hitting the ball is vital in your ability to win points, to prolong points, to keep in the point, to attack the net. I'm a big yep. believer in getting to the net more often. So the, the ability to win more points will come from having better footwork and just the ability to split step, I think is a huge contributor to that. And honestly, like you'd be surprised how many people, even that, that claim to be like more intermediate players and they don't know how to split step. Like they, they learned all the technique and, and, and that's great. However, I mean, just thinking about it, this is such a crucial point because no matter how good your technique is, if you're not positioned well for the ball, how are you going to make contact where you want? There 100%. goes all your, there goes all your consistency. There goes all your power. And I love what you were talking about, about, um, you know, being balanced. There's so many times, I mean, that's like all the time my clients are falling off their back foot or they're falling over this edge over here because they haven't established a solid foundation. And I think that's like, honestly, the number one thing, well, like what you're saying is just, mm -hmm. are you prepared for the shot? And if you're prepared with a split step and you're on time, then you can position yourself up for the ball. Otherwise it's kind of like, you know, no, so, 100%, 100 in everything you're saying, I agree with. Yeah. With, with the split step, which is a physical thing to do right. to help you be in the right spot. The second idea below, below being in the right spot and how players are not in the right spot is what I call a lack of empathy. So I feel players do not have the ability often enough to put themselves in their opponent's shoes, see the point and the shot from the opponent's side of the court, yeah and take a, a, an educated guess on the shot the opponent is gonna hit. About six months ago, there was a woman at our tennis club, and I've known this woman for years. Uh, I, I haven't taught her much, but I, I know her well. Mm -hmm. And she said to her friends in a group, I have the hardest time knowing where my opponent is gonna hit the ball. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I, after the, the group dispersed, I walked up to her and I said, do you mind if I give you one quick tip? And she said, oh my gosh, absolutely. I said, I overheard you say that you never knew where your opponent was gonna hit the ball. And she said, yeah. I said, let me ask you first, before I give you this tip, how often do you always have a target when you hit the ball? And she goes, I never do. I said, if you don't have a target, you always hit in a certain situation and, and, a, and a standard by which you play, mm -hmm. then how can you take, your, take the point or flip the point and look at the point for your opponent's side and guess what shot they're going to hit? For instance, if when you always lob in doubles, mm -hmm. sorry, when you always switch in doubles, if whenever you switch and you're in trouble, you always lob then when you lob your opponents and they're switching, you're like, they're probably gonna lob us. You, right. can, start to, you can start to take a guess at what your, your opponent's going to do with their shot if you know what shot you would go for in the same situation you see your opponent in. If you, if, if you never hit a certain shot in a certain situation, how can you possibly come up with a guess of the shot your opponent is going to hit? Yeah. And so it kind of goes back to always having a target. But if you can start looking at the opponent's situation and go, what shot would I go for in her situation? Right. Then you can start to prepare for that and you'll be so much better. I, I have players who lob their opponent. Right. I have students who will lob the opponent successfully and right. then get right up against the net. 
Well, the opponent's going to lob back. So you just made it easier for them to lob you. I always say to these students, I say, well, what shot do you think they're going to hit? And they say, I think they're going to hit a lob back. And then I say, well, what shot would you like to hit off of that lob? And they say, overhead. I said, you can't hit an overhead from one inch from the net because it's going over your head. Yeah. And you can't hit an overhead from the baseline. Get to the service line. If you can, if, which again, goes back to always having a target. Right. Which is the, why I said it's the first one, because I actually believe it's the most important, because it's how you come up with your technique, because yeah. intentions drive technique. It gives you the reason to split step, because you can start to understand, oh, these are the range of shots they can go for. If, if for my students, for your listeners, if they can start to empathize and just put themselves in their opponent's shoes and start to understand what shot the opponent might go for, most likely, then they can position themselves as singles or as a doubles team to best react and best handle the shot the opponent's going to hit. Booyah, Ryan. <laughs> that is like gold. Like, honestly, that, that's a, and that's a tough situation. You hear clients, they ask that all the time. Like, how, how am I supposed to know what my opponent's hit? And you're the first one that actually it's eye opening for me because I never thought about telling them like, oh yeah, well, what would you do? You know, that's totally 100% gold right there. Everybody listening, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy you like it because well, I can tell so you the, re the results with my two fives, my three O's, my three fives, five O's and up, like they get this already. Right. Tip it, they usually get this. Right. But, but, but the 90% of tennis players really struggle. And I, it's funny, Marissa, because I start, they say I struggle with anticipation. Right. So what I start doing is I start putting them in all different kinds of situations yeah. and then just having them hit targets and hit the appropriate shot. This is yeah. a green situation. Be offensive. Okay, you're in a red situation. Be defensive. And they're like, wait a minute. I thought you were going to teach me anticipation. I'm like, how can you anticipate what your opponent's going to do if you don't even know what you're going to do? Because right. people of the same level have the same thinking typically. It's they true. have the same uh, shots they typically go for. So know about yourself in order to know more about what your opponent's going to do. Brilliant. Just brilliant. Amazing. Cool. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's get the breakdown here. So how to win points. Summarization. Number one, you have Number to have an intention. Yeah. 100%. You have to have the intention. And the way you find this intention for um, height over the net, of course, is get a balloon and tie it to a, to a net. I'm telling you that I absolutely love it. It's great for kids too. They love it. Yeah. But just having that visual so top notch. And then number two, of course, being positioned well for the ball and obviously having that footwork and that split step and the preparation phase of your stroke intact. Yep. Love it. Um, is there anything else that you want to throw in just before I close it out? No, I think, I mean, this is, I, I love the forum. I love, um, I love, you know, your ability to draw, like ask really good questions and draw even better answers. Um, but just, I, I want people to know it's possible to improve. It's possible to get better. And we're, no one is ever going to play their absolute fantasy level of play. Not even Federer and Serena play their best tennis every time. Right. But if we can just be continuous in our in our education, in our self-evaluation, in our desire to get better, mm -hmm. then that's where the true fun of tennis actually comes from. Love it. And totally 100% agree. Like the most fun thing for me is why I still compete and love to learn myself is just that value of, of self-improvement and feeling like you succeeded because you worked hard and you tried and you did what you had to do to get to that next level. So love it. All right, I'm going to close this out. But before I do, um, Ryan, tell us where to follow you, what, what social media platforms you're on, and if you have any amazing content that you have extra that you want to share. Sure, yeah, yeah. So if you're in the Pennsylvania, <laughs> Philadelphia area, you can find me at Doylestown Tennis Club, about an hour north of Philadelphia. What, what? Uh, you can check out my website, twominutetennis.net. I'm on Instagram, twominutetennis underscore. I'm on TikTok. Uh, two Minute Tennis, you can find me on LinkedIn, Two Minute Tennis, you can find me on YouTube, Two Minute Tennis, the Two Minute Tennis podcast, you know, I think you get the idea. It's a two, the number two, not T-W-O. It is numeric, it is in numeric. In case you are listening. 
<laughs> and then what services do you provide? So the people want to know. You, yeah, are you talking about, so I, are you talking about in, like video, video lessons, lessons and everything? Yeah. yeah, so I do, uh, I'm helping both players and coaches. So I'm helping players through remote video analysis. I'm doing about one, one to two of those a day. And that is where people around the world are sending me videos of their technique. And I make a full video lesson. Uh, the video lesson I just did today was an hour and four minutes long. It is a video I send to people soup to nuts, side by side comparison. It's it's incredible the improvement this my students are seeing from this. Um, so you can just reach out to me, Ryan at two minute tennis net in order to uh, ask more questions or just DM me on any of these social medias. Uh, but I'm also if you're a coach, helping coaches learn how to start a video analysis business, especially at the recording of this podcast during a quarantine where almost all tennis coaches cannot even get onto a tennis court. We still want to make an impact, a positive impact in players' games and right. knowing how and actually the, the actual mechanics of how to make a video lesson and remote stroke analysis for students. I'm currently doing those on Saturday nights with uh, coaches from around the world uh, so people can reach out uh, for more information for those uh, products as well. Love it. All right, Ryan. Awesome podcast. We all got tons of value. Super duper excited. Um, for everyone that's listening, don't forget to follow Ryan. And of course, um, check out his services. He has actually sent me a video analysis long ago and it was fabulous. He taught me how to hit a birthday hat off my head. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, on other notes, uh, for more to help you guys on how to win more points and if specifically you needed help with footwork, don't forget you can get my free seven day footwork challenge. I made five minute footwork workout videos for you guys and that will definitely help you hone in on your split steps. So do it, do it, do it. But other than that, I'm going to sign out and I hope you guys join us on the next episode of Tournament Time.